Hello and welcome to Around the House with Kay and Tom. And this morning I was out doing my uh, bi-weekly grocery shopping and I ran across these uh, bone-in beef short ribs here and I thought, boy, they sure do look good. And so I picked me up a pack to bring home. And so I'm getting ready to fix them up and uh, get them cooked here because it's getting close to lunchtime. So I think I'll get started with that. Okay, now this piece of uh, rib right here has this piece of fat going down the, the uh, bottom of it here, and I don't especially want to see that fat or don't want to eat it. Okay, and it's got this, it's got this piece of, I guess you call it silver skin on it right here. I'll try to get it off there without uh, losing too much of my meat. But that's not going to be very tasteful, I wouldn't think. Get as much of it as, off as I can, you know, without getting down and losing too much of my red meat. Hmm. That's that one. Oh. Now this one doesn't have that fat on the bottom of it. Got just a little bit there. I'm going to leave that there. Let me see if I can do this a little bit better on this one. Yeah, there it is. Now you know if you try to eat that, it's just going to be tough as shoe leather, you know, and it'll be really hard to eat. So, why not take it off to start with? It really surprises me that. Uh, Sort of surprised me it wasn't trimmed off before I got it, but it wasn't, so. Anyway, now it is. Now we got three beautiful pieces of meat here. Put these, discard these over here. Well, it'd be good to make something out of. <laughs> okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to put some uh, salt and pepper on these things. Okay, and then I'm going to put some of uh, this grill mates Montreal steak seasoning on here. Well, that gives it a pretty good flavor most of the time. I'm going to rub that in just a little bit. Not a whole lot. <laughs> See if I can dab the end on the little parts left over there. The little parts that fell off. Okay, and turn them over. Well, now let me get some paper towels and clean my hands, of course. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side here. And I'm going to try to rub that in a little bit. Now, if you noticed, I didn't try to put any on this side here because that's just that bone down there. So, 
I don't think it'd do very much good if you tried to put any on it. Even if you got it to stay on it, it's uh, still not going to do any good. All right, now we'll take this uh, little trick here that comes with the Ninja Foodie Deluxe. I can make room here. I'm going to put these three pieces of beautiful meat on them in just a second. Okay, now I'm going to take this uh, cup and a half of beef broth and put down in this Ninja Food Deluxe pot. I'm going to lower these three short ribs right down in here on top of it. That looks like a plan right there, doesn't it? Now the next thing I want to do is put this pressure lid on right here and turn it clockwise until it stops. And then I'm going to turn on the power. I'm going to set it over here on pressure. We'll leave it on high, but the minutes over here now. You push this little time button here in the middle, it'll start flashing up there. So then you can turn your dial to the right or left. If you turn it to the right, it raises it to the left. Of course, it lowers it. So we want. I want 30 minutes on those ribs right there. And so then I'm going to hit the start button. Okay, and so make now let me show you something. Now this is the position my valve was in when I said hit start button. And you can leave it like that and you can let it sit here all day long and it's not gonna build up enough pressure to start pressure cooking. You gotta turn it over to seal just like that. And now it's in the sealing position and it'll start building up pressure so it can uh, pressure cook. So, and let me tell you, I'm not, <laughs> that's not the first time I've done that. That's, I usually don't catch it that quick, so <laughs> make sure you turn your little valve up here to sealing and not venting. Okay, and now we get back over here and we see these little lights jumping around there. Try, it'll do that till it builds up enough pressure to start counting down. And so in the meanwhile, while well, y'all got a chance, if you can, join our channel. Give us a thumbs up. We sure appreciate it. And thank you very much to you people that watches our videos. We really love it when you watch our videos. And so, if you can, check out our links down below. You might see something down there you like from Amazon. Can't never tell. And so, now, that's the end of all that for today. So, on with the show. Okay, now it took it nine minutes for this little button back here to pop up and seal the uh, seal the compartment here so it can start pressure cooking. But now that doesn't automatically mean that these little lights are ready to start uh, counting down yet. It takes it usually takes another minute or so. So I'm just going to see exactly how long it's going to take. Like I said, it took nine minutes for it to pressurize where the button come up back there. Now we'll see how long it takes on this. Less than a minute, believe it or not. But, well, it might take right at a minute, but it's real close. So, once the button come up, about another 45, 55 seconds, it started counting down. So, we'll be back. Folks, forget when you when you cook it with raw meat like this, and poultry is even worse than beef, but when you're cooking with raw meat like this and you got on your cutting board and everything, I always like to use my uh, clean my cutting board with, with uh, Clorox, bleach it down good and and uh, and then wash it and that way you'll be sure all the germs are gone the next time you get ready to use it, just pull it out and wipe it off and use it. And then I'll go over all my uh, countertops here with this Lysol, make sure I get everything down good with it. That way try to eliminate as many germs as you can. Some people like germs. I like to get rid of them. So, 
<laughs> anyway, you might want to think about that. You might not. You know, we're under 20 seconds on this cook here. <clears throat> now, when it finishes and it goes down to zero, I'm going to let it do a natural release for five minutes. And, so, and then we'll uh, take the rest of the pressure off of it. So now, the nice thing about the Ninja Foodie here is, Ninja Foodie Deluxe is now that it's uh, counted down to zero. Now it's starting to count up. It'll count up from zero up to ever how long you leave it in there, I guess, up to 50, 59 minutes. I don't know. I've never tried it. But anyway, I'm going to let it go for five minutes, and then I'm going to do the natural release on it. So we'll be back. <laughs> okay, now we've got the five minutes on this uh, natural release here, so now we'll go back here on this... Uh, valve back here and we'll try to vent. Yeah, so it shouldn't be a whole lot more pressure in there, although it's quite a bit. So now it's counting on down here. So. Okay, now it's been releasing for almost two minutes now after I uh, after that five minute natural release. So that should, pin should be dropping any second now. Should be dropping any second now. And there it went. It just dropped down. Now let's open this pot and see what we've got. Now turn your lid counterclockwise. And by the way, don't never touch this metal strip while this thing is under pressure and cooking. And it still don't touch it because it is extremely hot. Anyway, lift this up and lift it away from your face. Oh boy, look at those ribs. Uh, they're talking about falling off the bone or off the bone. Oh, jeez. Don't they look good? Let me get in here a little bit closer so you see better. Oh man, look at that. Oh. Now, tell me, don't you think that's going to be tender? It's going to fall off and break into it and fall on the floor or something. So I'm going to put my plate over here closer by. Now you're talking about, like I said, talk about fall off the bone. There's the bone still in there. <laughs> so, now I got me one of these uh, sesame seed Petrus Farr uh, hamburger buns here, sandwich buns, whatever you want to call them. Put me some mayonnaise on it. I'm going to put me a piece of this right here on the middle of it like that. <laughs> Didn't mean to grab that cheese like that though. Hmm. I'm going to come back here and put that piece of cheese on. I'm going to put this piece of cheese on. I'm going to put this piece on top of it. And now we'll put this on top of that. <laughs> now this is a short rib sandwich right here. People drive miles and miles around to get this if you tried to sell it somewhere. Let's try it, see how it is. Mm-mm-mm. The most <clears throat> tenderest best tasting piece of beef you'll ever have on a sandwich. If you ever fix you one of these, you'll probably never have another hamburger. You go ahead and insist on having these. So, I hope you try this sometimes because you're really going to like it. This is delicious right here. Hmm. Goodness gracious. About it for this little short video on this uh, uh, short rib uh, sandwich, and I'll tell you what, it sure was. It sure is good. And I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And, and 
I don't think you'll enjoy watching as much as I'm going to enjoy eating this because this is delicious. And so until next time, if y'all can, give us a thumbs up and join our channel. We sure appreciate it. And y'all have a real good and safe day now. And so, goodbye.